Now, we are stepping into another very important subject in the science of financial management. <clears throat> and this is all about costing. The question, the, the, the fundamental question about costing is how we understand costing. <coughs> Sorry. Because one thing is understanding costing from the purely financing accounting point of view and like money, like uh, figures. And something else is to understand costing as a lost opportunity or like value of something else that we have not done. And this is the concept that is um, core in management accountancy. So there are different approaches, different logic approaches. Some people like it, some people do not like it. It depends. Some people think it's phenomenally easy. Some people think it's sort of weird and not intuitive. Therefore, we will do it as usual, step by step. And we will just do it uh, like that. So firstly, what we have to say about costs. Generally, why? the question of cost is important. It is important because if you are in the market with your product and you compete with others, with your product, with your goods, with your raw materials, with your services, inevitably you are in a competition with your rivals. And obviously quality, obviously service is important, but then the price is the number one issue. So if your costs are lower than your competitor, most likely you have the advantage. And when you have the advantage with the cost, it's easier, much easier to compete. Therefore, these, this advantage in cost is in fact a vital part of competitive advantage in the market. And customers, of course, they value a lot quality, service, um, orientation towards the client. But then really the cost is something that is reflected in the price. And then the price is the thing that customers watch the most. So in order, this is pure truth, it's so so uh, easy to say that in order to compete, any company must reduce its costs. So we will um, approach this by defining and distinguishing relevant costs, outlay costs, opportunity costs. Then we will distinguish between fixed costs and variable costs. Actually, this is very important in pure calculation of if our business is profitable or is not profitable. It's just fantastic tool. Very simple, I mean, not very, but so simple in the concept. And then you have to put uh, good numbers uh, in it, the, the true numbers from your company, and then you have fantastic result, and you could analyze your business in perspective of money and as well perspective of quantity. And then uh, this very important break even point. This is a crucial point. This actually shows in one sentence, it shows how much or how many, if it's in items, how much of the product you have to produce and sell, of course, at a given price in order not to lose in this business. So very useful tool. 
And when, when we talk about costs, then we have this definition. What is cost? The amount sacrificed to achieve a particular business objective. It is the amount paid for the item of goods being supplied or the service being provided. And then measuring cost for decision-making purposes is not simple as it seems. <laughs> as I mentioned, we have different approaches, different way of calculation. So we will see all of that soon. So if we ask anybody with some kind of economics education, just a little, what is this, the cost? And majority would answer, how much was paid for an item of goods being supplied or a service being provided? You know, how much it costs, how much it was paid in order to sell it in the market. But then the question is, is that all? Perhaps not. So we will have just again an approach to that. And we have an example, a classic, classic example in almost every book. We have a situation. You bought a car. You bought a car at an auction. So anybody could come and <clears throat> bid for the price. You paid $5,000. Yes, it's below the market price because, you know, you could find what is the market price in uh, these uh, dealerships for cars or internet. Therefore, you know, it's below the market price. But it happens because at the auctions, when something is sold forcefully and then there is an auction, it might happen that there's a true occasion and you paid really in these particular circumstances below the market price. And then somebody offers you 6000 for this car. And you have the question, what is the cost of keeping the car for your own use? Remember, from the point of view of financial accountancy, you have spent $5,000. It is on your receipt, it is in, in your books. But when we see it from the point of this management accountancy, we have a fair question. Somebody offers you $6,000. So, as a matter of fact, you might sell it for $6,000, what probably, however, we don't know, but probably is the market price. So, there is a fair question. If you do not sell this car, what is the real cost of keeping the car for your own use. And this is the answer. When you have this car you do not sell, you waste an opportunity to sell this car at $6,000. So what you do, you make the real sacrifice and the real cost to you for your own use, what is $6,000? So, if you make any decisions what to do with the car, in your calculations, in your management of your finances, you should take into account the real cost in this sense, the real cost in this sense of $6,000. And this cost is known as opportunity cost because this is an opportunity to sell your car. This is a firm bid, $6,000, 
re refuse this firm bid, so you waste the opportunity of $6,000. However, in this way of thinking, in this logic, the figure of this $5,000 is only a historic cost. I hope this makes you um, a bit uh, clearer about the concept of cost in uh, management accountancy or in this logic that we have here. Because managers have to think like this, that, okay, it, it was bought in books for something, but then what we might say value, what uh, opportunity it represents. And in this circumstances, it is the cost. And here we have a um, we have this uh, summary that by keeping this car, you are just refusing this six thousand. Uh, here is pounds. Sorry, pounds dollars, and. It's not historic cost because this historic or historical cost is 5,000 and six is opportunity cost. And then uh, we have now an offer of 5,500. So what happens? Should we accept this offer or not? I just leave this question open for you just to think and then have an answer. Now we have the example two. We bought a car for 10,000. 10,000 dollars. But just after buying this car, we have found, say, on the market that it's worth 6,000 dollars. So, what should be the relevant cost in our calculation of cost? Because if we keep it, I mean, this decision, keep it for our drive or not. Because we have to switch our minds to this kind of logic. What do you think? Yes, as I pointed in this text, Yes, you found that the real worth is 6,000. So now, when we do any of our calculations about our business, we just do not remember this historic cost of 10,000. The relevant cost is now 6,000 because this is the cost of, um, of our product on the market. Sorry for this noise. But just uh, behind my window, there is a construction site since yesterday. So you might hear some knocks, but I, all, 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 all windows are closed. So I, I cannot do anything about that. It's, it's like this. All right. So we come to this question, relevant or irrelevant cost. It's quite important because when you do your calculation about... Um, viability of your business, you have to remember which one is relevant and which one is irrelevant. So historic or historical cost can never be a relevant cost regarding a future decision. Because what you paid, you paid. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters in the financial accounting or for taxation, but for uh, making calculation about the business, it doesn't matter. Because what matters is the relevant cost, like the current possibility of transforming the item into the money. So, people have natural tendency to stick to historical costs, of course. They have this natural uh, tendency 
because they remember uh, the, the act of paying or putting money in. But then you, as managers for future decisions, you have to cut this link, sentimental link, with historical cost because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You pay 10,000, okay, but you just find market says it's six. You do not fight the market. You will not convince anybody, hey, hello, but I paid 10,000, so it means it's, it, it, it's valued at 10,000. The market says, no, it's six. That's it. The end. So you, as managers, you have to cut you off from this, say, sentimental thinking. And the criteria for relevant costs are here, relate to the objectives to the business, a future cost, and may vary with the decision. We will show some examples later, because then it will be possibly clearer. Um, and perhaps uh, this lecture is on solid pace, but I believe, I trust that you spend some time with books and explanations and you just uh, try to understand these nuances of costs. Let's go. And we have the definition of the cost. Cost is an amount of resources usually measured in monetary terms. Sacrificed to achieve a particular objective. Very important. Because you have something that you use for your future activity. And you could use this thing either here or there or there. And then you measure like the highest other possible usage. And then you have your cost in the project. And these past or historic or historical costs are irrelevant. And the only concern would be opportunity costs and outlay costs. So how we could see them. And this is the explanation. The opportunity cost, the value in monetary terms of being deprived of the next best opportunity in order to pursue the particular objective. This is what I said. You could have a resource in your business, in your company, and you could dedicate this to something A, something B, something C. And because you, are, you just need to do, say, something A, then you find how much it would be worth in B, C, or D, or several others. And then the highest or next best opportunity would be in fact your cost, opportunity cost. And outlay cost is the amount of money that will have to be spent to achieve that objective. You could say that in some, some respect this outlay cost is like expenditure. You just pay out something. So this is your outlay cost. Yes, and for the making decisions, because what we talk today about is all about decisions for future. We try to calculate our activity in the future. Is it viable? Is it not viable? We have to, we have to know how to calculate this and we have to know how to uh, estimate this. So future opportunity and future outlay costs that are relevant. Please study more about this relevant, irrelevant. It's not very easy at the very first approach, but then it becomes more clear. We have another example, and this is sort of complex example, but let's go. The garage has bought a car several months ago for $3,000. The car needs a replacement engine before it is sold. 
It is possible to buy a second-hand repaired engine for $300. All right. And, you know, you need some time and some effort to put this engine into the car. So, it would take seven hours of mechanic work. And generally, the mechanic is paid $8 per hour. And it is very important information that you have the garage and you anticipate a larger contract in future. So you employ your mechanics on, your, on, on fixed salary and uh, they do not have at the moment enough work. So they just not fully employed. But you don't want to lay them off and reduce the number of mechanics because soon you will have a large contract and you will need them really in scale. And then we have another uh, information. Without the engine, the car could be sold at 3500 Okay? We bought the car. We have it. We have the price for the engine we know how much time it takes and how much the mechanic is paid then we know the circumstances with our workers our mechanics <clears throat> we know uh, how we could uh, easily sell it uh, without the engine and what is the minimum price at which the garage should sell the car. What is the minimum price? <coughs> you could uh, watch the, the data and we will have a look. So we have the solution, like the minimum price. The minimum price. The opportunity cost of the the car sold without this engine is 3500 and if we add up the engine to it we come to 3800 the purchase price of 3000 is irrelevant because it doesn't really matter it, what matters is what we could sell without the engine. And then you might, you might ask, so why we do not take into consideration this work that our mechanics would do with that? Why? Let me jump to the previous ones. Seven hours it will take, they are paid. Why? Why in our calculations we do not use at all this figure. And the answer is in the uh, last line, the labor cost is irrelevant because the labor cost remains the same whether the job is taken or not. You remember, they generally sit and do nothing and they are paid because on, they are on fixed salary. So if in this time, uh, they will do this engine repair. It's irrelevant. This this cost really for our our uh, calculation because they do it nevertheless. So the answer is three thousand eight hundred. And this example was supposed to show to us that uh, we have these relevant and irrelevant costs. Probably you have noticed here that the fact that workers are paid by hour does not matter really too much because still they work on fixed salary and they have, roughly speaking, nothing to do. So 
they are paid anyhow, so we could uh, consider this uh, business to be done. This is the solution. And, but now we have a slightly different example. The circumstances generally are as in the previous example, but we have this, that Garage has bought a car several months ago for $3,000 and the car needs a replacement engine before it is, it is sold and it's possible to buy 300 it's the engine and it would take seven hours of mechanic work um, to to do this and the mechanic is paid eight dollars per hour and without the engine the car could be sold at three thousand five hundred the difference in this case is that now we all our staff all our mechanics they are very busy with what we have now like all clients repairs and when we do as the garage when we do the client repairs we charge labor at twenty dollars per hour so now the question is what is the minimum price at which the garage should sell the car. It's quite an important question because now we have sort of different situation. You remember how we approached this at the previous example. So now we have this example and it looks like this. Maybe I will tell the story. The solution is that firstly we could sell the car like with nothing at three thousand five five hundred <coughs> despite the fact that we bought it cheaper but it's historical cost so it doesn't really matter the real matter is at what price could we sell the car without doing anything the engine is 300 but now what we charge actually our like financial cost would be seven hours at eight dollars because this is the wage of our worker but let's think about that they are normally employed by us to do our job and uh, if they are employed more, yes, after hours, we still charge the same thing to the clients what we charge normally. So our cost effectively is $20 per hour. Therefore, this whole labor cost, it's seven hours multiplied by twenty dollars which is 140 right the cost of wage at eight hours eight dollars per hour is irrelevant it's irrelevant because what we charge normally as the enterprise is 20. so it um, because we charge the same way as the mechanic does the job for the client and the underlining thought is that this eight hour eight dollars per hour would be paid by garage to the mechanic without any difference he is currently doing something who uh, is doing it for the garage or he's doing for the client he is paid the same thing, but it's irrelevant because what's relevant is what we charge. So finally, we have the figure 3,940. Perhaps we will have a slight variation in the description. It's the same thing, but say we will approach this exercise with different description. Like we have like two garages, right? A and B. And we have as well the same reconditioning engine at 300. Yes, we have the same workers 
at one uh, at eight dollar an hour and it takes seven hours then garage a is currently short of work so they do nothing but they paid by a fixed month salary but garage b is currently booked and in order to do this job um, this additional uh, what we have the project the mechanic would have to go to, to, to leave the previous job and to go this or do it after hours somehow so we have this charge for one hour labor at 20 however the mechanic is paid a per hour and now a slight variation to make it even more sort of stunning that we bought it at five but it could be sold at 3,500. Uh, 3, so to give you again an example that five was a historic cost, maybe it was too expensive, but now we know we could sell it at 3,500. So in this sort of reconditioned or sorry, rewritten uh, example, we have a merchant who wants, sorry, it's a confusion, it should be dollar, not um, pound. He wants to give us 3,900 for this. So we have like two different garages and should they accept this offer or not for this particular car? And uh, as, I, as I posted this question, so we have the calculation for the garage A. We know it just is the question of engine because the uh, uh, wage per hour is not relevant at all because the workers are doing what they are doing. So we are now, they, they do not have actually the work right now. So they will do this job. However, for the garage B, it's a different calculation because there's the selling price of the car plus the engine plus um, plus the labor costs. So when we have this question at the beginning, sorry, I put just go one. So when the merchant offers 3,900, so should the garage A take the offer? Yes or not? You should answer by now. <laughs> and then the garage B and this is like this, they should take this offer or reject it. It's pretty obvious. So you could see how it works. So this is the type of questions or type of tasks that we do while we are making calculations with the opportunity cost and all other costs that are involved into the business. You might think, it's, um, it's an easy task. Of course, we have to remember about this, that historical cost is irrelevant, it, no matter how much it was. Because now we have a very nice example, which you could, see, you could think it's a very easy one, but it's just the beginning. We have a situation like that. Maybe I will explain to you what's in the table. A company, uh, wants to bid uh, for the contract and it will involve two kinds of raw material sorry it's written here stock it should be a material uh, in the first column two kinds of raw material and both they are on stock at the company yes we have certain stock so it, it could be written stock or material okay and what we have we have this material A1 and material B2 and uh, we have this quantity that it's needed and the quantity for A1 is 500, the quantity for B2 is 800 and we have two, three columns. One is a historic cost per unit, it is at what price we bought the product and it is in our stock, in our inventory. Then we have the second column, which is 
sales value. If for a certain reason we want to sell A1, we could have like three um, dollars or pounds for this product. If we want to sell B2, we would have eight per unit of this product, say kilogram, for example. And then there is a third column, which is very important. The third column says replacement cost per unit. Replacement cost means that if we are short of the material on stock or if means we have used the material or we need to buy the material, then the replacement cost would be this price for replacing or refilling the stock. So if you want to go to the market to buy material A1, we have to pay six for unit, for example, for kilogram. And in case of material B2, we have to uh, go and buy it at 10. We as well a description that stock A is currently used by company at various jobs. Uh, no, we just use it on everyday basis. And the stock B, B2 was bought for another project, but in the meantime, this project was abandoned. So we have this 800 <clears throat> on stock, but it looks like the most likely we are not using this stock at all. So what happens is, uh, what happens? We uh, now have the situation like stock A1, stock B2. Fine. Now we have to be uh, a bit more concentrated because now some additional information or description. So it is obvious for the company that there is no likelihood of ever again using B2 if not for this project that we have in consideration. And the management would like to know what would be the minimum contract, a price for this contract. I mean, if it's not to, wants to reduce its wealth, it means if it's not going to lose money, right? So the question is clear. What should be the minimum price for this contract? And do you have any idea about the calculations? Normally I would put this question to you and you would work hard uh, at the lecture, but of course you have PDF and you would uh, just jump there and look uh, how the calculations uh, look like. So maybe if there are a couple of people who are very interested in doing themselves, I will just go back and I would say, how it looks like, stock A1 quantity 500, historic cost 5, sales value 3, replacement cost 6, and we have the stock B2 at quantity 800, historic cost 7, sales value 8, and replacement cost 10. Mm -hmm. So what would be the um, minimum price for the contract. The minimum price, we have to value A1 somehow, and we have to value B2 somehow. So, maybe you have calculated already, not, I have no other possibility like going there down, and let's see how it looks like with the explanation. A1 is in current use by the company. Mm -hmm. So if it's used on this contract that we have into consideration, it will have to be what? Don't sleep. It will have to be replaced. So if so, we value this material at the replacement cost. Let's go back for a moment. Yeah, not historic cost, not sales, because we are not selling it, 
but the replacement we have used it <coughs> and we would need to replace it therefore we value it at 6 right and now B2 B2 will never be used by the company yes because we mentioned this here no likelihood of ever using B2 if not for this particular project so B2 will never be used by the company so there is no reason to replace it mm -hmm. then we do not care in this calculation at what price we have bought it so there is no question of um, of the historic cost so yes it would make sense to sell this b2 if we do not use it for the pro this contract this project probably we would sell this so as we could see we just go back and we see that in case of b2 the sales value is at eight mm -hmm. so as such we value this um, material B at eight dollars okay so therefore the minimum contract price would be and now we have to find what it would be and we have the, the quantity once again a1 at 500 and B2 800 so it's 500 multiplied by 6 which is the replacement cost so it's 3000 and B2 it's 800 multiplied by 8 because in this in case of this product we use the sales value so 6400 so it's 9,400 for the total. This project would be valued by us at the price of 9,400. I told you, it has become a bit more complicated. So again, we now have a variation of that. And let's see how it looks like. We have the same table we have the same table it's a1 500 and we have the same table as previously yeah 500 and 536 and b2 800 but there are there are some changes yes a1 is currently used by our company but since this table there was produced the replacement cost for a1 rose by one third okay one third and a sales value rose by two third mm -hmm. so we have to know what to change in our table stock b was bought for another product abandoned and but since the above table was produced we have some changes the replacement cost rose by 20% and the sales value rose by one dollar mm -hmm. so now in this new circumstances what should be the minimum price for the contract and which information of these changes here rose one third rose two third and what information is relevant and which information is irrelevant you have to uh, think what would be the minimum price of the contract which price is relevant again and how this change is relevant because you do not need to calculate all the changes and then these are the correct calculations with the correct figure.